Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to barbecue a pork shoulder. So, barbecue pork shoulder. This is like beginner's barbecue. It is the most foolproof thing in the world, pretty much. Um, it's really, really difficult to screw up a pork shoulder because there's so much fat and connective tissue in here that, um, you know, the, the trick is you cook it till it's done um, and then that's it. Um, it, even even if it gets a little overdone, whether your temp temperature fluctuates a little bit, doesn't make too much difference. Um, there's so much fat and connective tissue in there that um, it stays nice and moist, really, no matter what you do to it. So the only thing you can do wrong is to undercook it, um, but there are easy ways around that. So, um, you know, you can get very complicated with barbecue, but I generally take a... a uh, lazy approach to it i kind of just like throw it on there i cook it till it's finished and then i take it off um and i don't really bother with um i don't really bother with much in terms of like um you know i don't use a thermometer i don't really pay much attention to what temperature the grill is at or the the, the smoker is at um, i definitely don't stick a thermometer in the meat um, i basically just cook it till it's done um you know the, the approach that i use you have to be willing to accept that it might be done in eight hours, it might be done in 12 hours. Um, you know, probably not any faster than seven or eight hours for a pork shoulder this size. Um, but, and so you have to be kind of a little bit flexible with, about when it's done. Um, but other than that, it's, I think it's the most foolproof way to do it. Um, and it gives you plenty of time to sit around and drink beer or drink mint juleps or drink whiskey, bourbon, whatever you want. Um, hard seltzers. All right, so what I did is I got my pork shoulder there. Um, I rubbed it. Um, if, if I was going to do this um, like real hardcore, I would probably rub it um, overnight and leave it to sit overnight so that the salt has a little bit of time to penetrate the meat and keep it juicier, but I'm not going to bother. Um, this pork rub is a home, this, this rub is a homemade rub that I have. Um, it's mainly, uh, it's got paprika, brown sugar, um, I'll, I'll link a recipe to it and I'll put the recipe in the description. Um, paprika, brown sugar, um, garlic, onion, oregano, some other things. Um, salt. salt. Salt, sugar, and spices are mainly it. Um, Alright, now I'm going to take... This is a like a quarter of a chimney of coals that I lit already. I'm gonna put them all over this one side of the grill. Okay. And now I generally use the the snake snake method, which is where you take some extra coals. Not that many. So the idea here, this you know, this is a you know southern barbecue in the style of the southern US, so low and slow. The idea is that we want to cook the pork shoulder nice and slow so that um, the collagen in it, the connective tissue, has a chance to uh, break down and convert to gelatin. Um, and that happens at temperatures, once the pork hits around 170 degrees or so, that's when that starts to happen. Um, and then over time, the tough shoulder becomes tender. Um, here, oops. So we're going to make a little sort of like a snake of coal. And the idea here is that as the, as the, um, this initial fire is gonna die out, but this little snake of coals, they're gonna light sort of one at a time and move along, it's gonna move along the chain until eventually they're all going to, um, uh, they're gonna help keep a, help maintain like a slow, even heat so that you can leave this and let it sit there for hours without really having to think about it. Um, I'm also gonna throw in a couple wood chunks here just for the start. All right, and now we're going to be cooking over indirect heat. So, right here. Pork shoulder. Um, so this is pork shoulder. It's also known as, as pork butt, even though um, it's not the butt. It's the actual. It's actually the shoulder. Pork butt is uh, pork butt is pork shoulder. You can, might also see it called Boston butt. Um, it comes from the uh, the term comes from. Um, butt barrels back when pork used to be salted and packed into barrels um it would it would be uh, uh packed into barrels called butts because of the because of the types types of wood joints that were in them um and so people started calling it boston butt um and that name <clears throat> and that name has stuck since then so pork butt is pork shoulder um this one is bone in you could use bone you can use boned out you can use a whole picnic shoulder which includes sort of the the boston butt plus the uh the part that sticks out, the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the picnic is what it's called. Um, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's all very, very forgiving stuff. Um, this is probably about five pounds or so. Um, pork shoulders range from like five to eight pounds. Um, you want to plan on probably about three quarters of a pound of, um, 
uncooked meat per serving um, because it cooks down a lot. Um, so it'll come down, each, each pound will come down to probably about, you know, it'll lose probably a good 40% of its weight. Um, so with a five pound shoulder like that, you can serve easily seven or eight, you know, six to six to eight people, big sandwiches or use it for a number of other things. Um, all right, so we got our grill going. I'm gonna set the vents to just slightly cracked like that. Put the lid over here. The vents on this side also just slightly crack like that. Um, so that basically, you know, limiting the oxygen flow is basically what, what regulates temperature inside there um, and, and sort of defines how those coals are going to be burning. So low, small vents means lower temperature because the coals cannot, don't get enough oxygen to burn as hot. Um, and then that's it. We're basically going to sit there and let it smoke. I might check on it in an hour or so, throw a couple more wood chunks in, um, make sure that the coals are lighting up, uh, make sure that it's not getting too hot. Um, I don't bother putting a temperature throw, probe into the pork. If you want to, you can. Um, what you'll probably find is that it'll raise and it'll rise up steadily in temperature, and then once it hits about like 150 or 160 degrees, um, it kind of plateaus. Um, that's called the stall, and that's the point. At, the, the plateau point is the point at which moisture evaporating from the pork um, is evaporating at a rate that uh, counteracts the amount of energy being pumped into it. So it kind of sits at that temperature for a little while. Um, that's totally normal. It's going to continue to rise after that. Some people do what's called the Texas crutch, which is you wrap it in foil when it comes to that stall point. Um, I don't bother. Um, I, I, I really think, you know, barbecue, especially pork shoulders, I, I like to take full advantage of the fact that it's so forgiving, um, which means that I just don't really care too much about it. I just let it go, do its thing. Um, and then tonight, uh, I'll be back here probably in, you know, I'll stop checking on it every hour or so, and I'll be back uh, at the very end in probably eight to 10 hours. Um, and uh, we'll know it's done. I'll show you, I'll show you how we know it's done. But uh, we'll be eating this either tonight or maybe tomorrow. But all right, so I will be back in one hour or so, maybe a little more. Um, so at this point, most of the coals have burned down. Um, I added another chunk of wood on there and I, and I also like kind of shook out some of the, uh, um, shook out some of the ashes that we're collecting up there into the bottom. Um, I added another chunk of wood so you can see that snake is starting to light here. Um, and as this goes, it's going to progress around here and it's gonna keep our pork cooking. Um, I also stole a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the crunchy fat because I like that stuff. All right. Now I'm just going to put it back and let it sit for another one more hour. So you can see temperatures at around 225, which is what we want. And here's where it's happening. So you can see that snake of coals is sort of snaking along. Um, you know, I'll probably at some point before it gets to the end, I'll wrap this one back around to the other end so that it doesn't get too close to the uh, pork and I can just keep it going all night. But um, yeah, we're going to let that keep going. And the pork is, pork is looking good. It's developing some nice bark on it. Um, mm. man, all right, I'll be back in just about three hours. So, um, my fire had started to get a little low and the temperature is dipping below 200. So I added, um, I basically put another, another, another small little pile of coals there and I decided to make my snake of coals about double. Uh, double width instead of single width so that the flame would stay a little bit hot so that the temperature would stay a little bit hotter um, I also opened up the bottom vents all the way. I'm keeping the top vents I'm gonna keep them about halfway cracked and then I stuck this one wood chunk here in the middle just so that it'll sort of Self-ignite and keep the uh, keep the smoke going um, So yeah, and the pork is I've, <laughs> I've still been picking at it and it's delicious um, But it's not quite tender yet. It'll probably be another couple hours at least um, So I will be back in three more hours. Um, I don't know how long it's been total, six hours-ish. Um, I'm gonna give this a little. Mm. Tastes good. Um, so to tell it's done, you wanna stick your fork in. No, this is not done. So you should be able to stick it in very easily and kind of twist it without much resistance. But if it feels kind of bouncy at all like that, it's not done yet. Um, this fire is getting real low though, so I'm gonna add a few more coals. Um, I'll build another little pile again. Um, and this time, you know, I'm just gonna build a little pile. I think it'll be enough for it to carry over and finish. Um, so I think our total cooking time of this will probably end up being around, I don't know, around eight or nine hours. Sh I think this should do it. That should do it. Back here, 
you. There you go. Grab this old chunk, throw that back on top. Get a little bit more smoke there at the very end. And all right, I'm gonna cover this up for one last little burst, and I'll see you in a couple more hours. All right. Fire's just about dead. Looking good. So you can see the bone sticking out a little bit here. Yeah. Let's pull out a little bit. Hmm. So when it's done, it should shred apart easily like that. And it'd be super juicy and delicious. Mm. All right. I'm actually going to be eating this tomorrow. Um, so I will see you tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. Um, I had this in the fridge overnight, but what I'm going to do now, so you could have, the, the day that you do it, you can shred it if you want, but what I like to do is I like to wait until the next day and then sort of treat it like carnitas, where um, instead of just um, pulling it, I'm going to pull it, shred it, and then actually crisp it up in the oven um, under the uh, broiler. Actually, well, right now, actually, I just have the oven at 500 degrees. You could do it. You could do it under a broiler too. But what it does is that adds texture to it. Um, and so this is what you're looking for, by the way, when it's done. It should not fall off the bone, but it should pull off the bone. So when you pull it, the bone should come out clean like that. Um, and that's a sign that it's basically cooked, but not overcooked. But then again, you know, like I said, pork shoulder is very forgiving. So even if it's overcooked, it's still going to taste great. All right. So you want to get that bark and all the meat. Okay, and then we'll roughly shred this up by hand. Um, if you were, you know, depending on what part of the country you're in, they, they treat this different ways. So like in, in Eastern North Carolina, you would chop this up um, and have sort of chopped pork sandwiches, whereas in other parts of the South, you'd pull it the way I'm doing right now. Um, I generally find pulling is better because you, you lose a little bit less moisture that way. Um, and I find sort of the, you get a little more interesting texture. Um, but you can feel free to do it however, however you want. If you want, you, you can chop it with a knife or with a cleaver. All right, we're gonna pull it into big chunks like this, keep it nice and chunky. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to season it. I'll wash my hands first. So we are also going to season, season it Eastern North Carolina style, which is with um, a little cider vinegar. So they make a sauce out of cider vinegar, chili, um, sometimes a little sugar. Um, rather than making a sauce, I'm just going to do this the easy way, which is just to sort of drizzle some apple cider vinegar over it. Give it a little chili flake. Not too much. Some salt because the exterior of that meat was seasoned, but the interior was not. And then some uh, sugar. Not too much, about a, about a tablespoon or so. And we'll mix this all up. Give it a little taste. Mm, great. All right. 
Now it's gonna go straight into this oven. Oops. I left my, uh, this is a little bread baker. I was baking a loaf of bread in here the other day. Let's get that out. All right, this is going in the oven. And we're just gonna leave it in there till it crisps up and warms through, so probably about 15 minutes or so. All right, so I'll be back in 15 minutes. All right, so there we go. So if you ever worried that you don't get enough bark from just the regular pulled pork, um, this is what I do. I do it, well, this is how you would finish a tray of carnitas. You would either do it like that or you would deep fry it. Um, but this ends up giving you a lot more of this sort of crusty, delicious crusty bits. And then we can shred a little bit more with a fork. But I do tend to like to leave it in sort of larger chunks because I find it ends up being a little bit juicier. Um, so my friends Robert and Anna, who run the bakery um, Bach House in San Mateo, down the street from my restaurant, um, they made me these, uh, they made these milk bun, milk bread hamburger buns. Um, so we're gonna use those for these sandwiches. Um, they actually also, I gave them a bunch of plums from my tree and they made these um, plum turnovers as well which are delicious, but all right. So for this sandwich, we're doing bun. I'm gonna do some pickles on it. Coleslaw. This is like a chopped slaw. So this is basically just chopped cabbage. This is actually Napa cabbage because that's what I had in my fridge. Napa cabbage, carrots, seasoned with um, mayo, cider vinegar, salt, pepper, sugar, and a little mustard. And a big pile of the... Uh, Pork. Whew. A little bit too big. All right. All right, I'm gonna take a bite of mine and then bring the rest out to them. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Smoky, vinegary, sweet. Juicy. Delicious. All right. Oh, here. Shabu. Oh, and Hamon, you want a little too? Here you go, buddy. All right, Shabu, sit. Good girl. Here you go, buddy. All right. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye.